Hey guys welcome back to the channel in today's video i want to show you guys my razor build and as you can see with that showcase you can actually do some pretty insane numbers especially if you build them the right way also guys one quick thing that i forgot to mention is that razor in english actually has the same voice actor as natsu from fairy tale now i've got a fire in my belly that's raging to get out <laughs> Vision helps Razor fight with Lightning Tooth, protect Lupicar. So that's also something pretty cool that I forgot to mention, but yeah, there you go. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of his attributes before we move on to the actual build, and then we'll get into party members and his playstyle. Starting off, we have about 2700 attack, that's with Wolf's Gravestone. We'll move on to weapons here in a couple minutes though. Um, you don't really need to build defense or elemental mastery or even HP on him. He has 62% crit rate with 161% crit damage. Uh, we'll go through how we're able to get that kind of crit rate uh, here in a minute, but mostly just artifact building and an 88.3% physical damage bonus. Uh, that's a little bit low for someone like Razor, but we'll get into why it's so low here in a couple minutes, because uh, most of that is being converted into attack instead of physical damage, uh, because Razor actually does skill with physical damage uh, as uh, when you ascend him. For weapons, Wolf's Gravestone is actually still his best in-slot weapon. I've done countless DPS tests with Song of Broken Pines, and honestly, Skyward Pride can't even compare, even though the side effect is really good. Uh, if you do only have Song of Broken Pines, or if you do only have Skyward Pride, either of these weapons will do perfectly fine, uh, especially with this passive. Like I said, the Vacuum will do 80% of his attack, which actually, uh, each blade that comes from this does scale with his physical damage bonus, so it is still a really solid weapon. Same for this, this is Eula's weapon, it gives him a little bit of physical damage bonus, it increases your normal attack speed and your attack percentage by another 20% on top of this. So this is all. This is overall also a really solid weapon, but still can out DPS Wolf's Gravestone because of the crazy attack percentages that it gives you. For 3 star weapons, if you're just starting out, you can use something like Debate Club. Honestly, I don't think there's any other better 4 star weapon that's worth mentioning other than Serpent Spine, which I actually don't have. It's the, it's the Battle Pass weapon and it gives you an insane amount of crit rate. And because Razor is a very selfish person who loves to be on the field most of the time, you'll be able to make the most out of all five stacks of this, and he'll get that insane uh, damage increase. So that's about all for the weapons for now. Uh, I can go into a more depth, in-depth video if you guys want to see more weapon options for him, but for now, we're just going to stick with those main options. Basically, any five-star weapon, uh, even the Unforged, is still a really good option, especially if you have somebody like Zhongli in your team. Or even somebody like Noel, just somebody to keep him shielded. The Unforged is still a really great weapon on him. Moving on to artifacts, there's quite a few different sets that you can use. I've chosen to go with Gladiator because that's what I have the best pieces for. Overall, it still comes very close between a 4-piece Glad set, 2-piece Bloodstained, and a 2-piece Pale Flame. Or even a 4-piece Pale Flame will work either way. Ideally, I would say your, your most ideal set to go for him is 4-piece Pale Flame. And whatever you don't actually get, all the bad artifacts that you can get, I would try converting them into glad pieces because this is uh, his next set, or if not, the same best set uh, for Razor himself. Just because of this crazy 4-piece attack bonus, um, it increases the normal attacks, and especially if you're on Razor's Q a lot, you're going to be doing nothing other than, than normal attacks. So you are getting that 18% attack bonus and a 4-piece normal attack damage uh, because he is using a Claymore. So he's actually one of the very few characters inside of the entire game that's able to benefit from this 4-piece, so I don't think it should be something that's overlooked. Here's a quick little walkthrough of my artifacts in case you want to sit around and look at them. Overall, we have some pretty solid artifacts on Razor. You definitely want to go for a crit rate helmet. In this case, we were able to get a very good one, but for the majority of it, you want to go with a crit rate helmet. 
You want to go with a physical damage bonus goblet as Razor does scale with physical damage. And you want to stack as much of that up on him as possible. And attack sands. It's basically just the standard physical setup. You know, crit rate hat if you need it. Crit damage if you need crit damage. And physical damage bonus on the goblet. For constellation, I do end up having him C6. But if you don't have it, don't worry. His constellation is nothing more than a little bit of a damage boost. But... Basically this one, when he picks up an elemental orb, it'll increase his damage by 10%, which is actually a pretty good one for an early constellation. Same with this one, but you're not really going to notice it unless it's a big boss. You're not really going to feel the bonus of this. It only it only increases your crit, ba your crit rate by a little bit. This one is just a, level, a talent leveling one. This one is probably his best constellation if you had to ask me. It decreases their defense by 15% once you hit them with your E. And this one is another talent booster. This last one, basically every 10 seconds your sword charges up with Electro and you're able to deal 100% of Razor's attack as Electro damage as you can see right here. So, that's honestly a pretty good one. And because we have such a high base attack on him, this is actually going to... Uh, it's actually going to deal way more damage as if than if we were just to run pure physics. For his talents, we have 8, 5, and 7. These two are a little bit low. The way I would go about leveling these is I would definitely level his normal attack first, as you would with most characters, and then uh, his Q, and then his E. Razor benefits a lot from his Q, and every little bit of increase to his normal attack speed helps out a whole bunch. For his passive talents, this is obviously a really good one, just by decreasing his E's cooldown, so he'll just be able to E more often. And this is also a pretty decent one. Razor's energy is lower 50%, it increases the energy recharge by 30%. This is just another boost to get his Q back up pretty fast. And his last talent, passive talents, nothing to write home about, it's literally just... You can run without using as much stamina. And that's about all for him. I want to get into party members next and basically his playstyle and how I like to play Razor. Alright, so for his party setup, this is what I'm currently rolling with. We obviously have the double pyro in here for the plus 25% attack right here. We have Rosaria to be able to, you know, proc superconduct with them so they have their physical resistance decreased i would just re recommend running anybody cryo um in in this spot if you don't have rosaria understandable everybody has kaya you can always use somebody like kaya you can use chi chi if you want to use her as a healer but i just prefer bennett for the attack booster but if you do have chi chi and you do decide to use her she's actually pretty good with razor it's one of the very few team comps that she's actually still viable in i uh, i'm using shin Yan in this in this spot just because i have her c4 and she decreases enemies physical resistance with her E. Alternatively, you could use someone like Sing Shu for freeze. You can use somebody like a shielder. This part's pretty flexible. Honestly, you could use anybody that you'd really like. Shang Ling, if you want just some overloaded in there, just some extra damage from her pyro. And for the last spot, we're using Bennett obviously as a healer and for a huge attack buff. I wouldn't really recommend switching out Bennett for anybody else just because for the the insane uh, attack increase and for the insane healing that he provides. So overall, I think this is one of, if not Razor's strongest party setups. Um, but yeah, so this is about it for his party setup. If you have these characters, then I would definitely recommend throwing them on unless you don't have Xin Yan uh, up to C4. Now when I get into Razor's playstyle and the way that I like to play him, generally if you're finding a lot of small enemies, there's not really a whole lot that goes into it. You're basically just going to Rosaria E and then Razor E and just basically do his normal attacks, right? Um, as you can see, his sword is actually infused with Electro because... Um, of his sixth constellation but for some animation canceling tricks that I want to show you guys like it is with most claymore users he actually values the most out of his last attack his four hit damage is 215 percent and especially if you decide to go with a four piece glad like I am you're not going to want to be doing charge attacks with him so after your fourth attack you can obviously sprint out of it jump out of it and you can continue attacking or uh, you can even use your E to get out of it. But you're still going to have a small delay in there. It's not going to be as fast as dashing. And generally, by your fourth, by the time your fourth hit actually does land on them, you've got full stamina anyways. So Razor's pretty sufficient with stamina consumption, especially if you're going to be doing normal and not charge attacks with them. Another way you can actually cancel the animations is after, after his last hit, you can swap characters and then swap back with him. Because usually, back by the time you get off of him, they should be close to having the E off a cooldown, or you can swap to a different character if you'd like. So when I'm fighting bigger enemies, or enemies that are just more difficult to take down, generally what I like to do is I like to use my Bennett Q first if I have it. If not, then what you can do is just use your Xin Yan E, right? And then you can use that to debuff them and not have any element on them. 
You can use her E or her Q depending on which one you have. And then you can use Razor's E again or his Q depending on what you have for Superconduct. So basically what you're gaining from that is if you have a Bennett Q, you're obviously just going to get that huge attack boost from his Q. From Shin Yen's Constellation 4, uh, as you can see right here, it decreases their physical resistance by 15%. And then of course Superconduct is the last proc that you're going to be getting. And so yeah, you're just going to be shredding their their physical resistance as well as their defense with Razor's Constellation. Razor's fourth Constellation that decreases their defense in general. So you're going to be dealing a lot more damage with this entire party setup, especially if you have Shin Yang Constellation 4. Overall, that's going to wrap up my entire Razor build video. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you want to see more content like this or different builds, let me know down in the comments section below. And do keep in mind that since YouTube decided to remove the dislike button, I need to actually gather your feedback down in the comments. So if you don't mind, then go ahead and slap down a comment of what you actually think about this video instead of disliking it, as I will no longer be able to actually see that. Thank you all so much for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.